Hi, welcome to another video. This is Novel Idea. My name is Dahlia. I am going to do the bar in the bookcase tag today. All right, so I have my notes uh, in my notebook here. And the first question is an old fashioned. So a historical fiction novel that you would suggest. For this, I am going to choose Birdsong by Sebastian Fox. This is a historical fiction that takes place during World War I and it really follows uh, the experience of the protagonist in pretty harrowing detail during his time serving in the army. And interwoven, there is also like a very romantic tale. It's a tragic love story, but I remember just being like totally into this book. It's a page turner. It's not one of those dry historical fictions that I sometimes don't want to read to be honest so i really enjoyed this it's a good historical fiction if you have not checked that out it's a classic bird song by sebastian fox i don't think you'll be disappointed the second one which i have not read in a very long time i think i read it in high school the other balloon girl i don't know how accurate or whether the veracity of her novels is like there <laughs> the other balloon girl was like a juicy drama all about obviously Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. I was there for it. It's a very bingy book. I enjoyed that book. I remember uh, not being able to put it down. So that's another historical fiction recommendation. Okay, so the other prompt is Sidecar, best supporting character. I'm gonna mention Faye Greener. She's a character in The Day of the Locust and she is a total savage. So check that out. The next prompt is a Manhattan. So a book that takes place in New York City or New York. I am choosing Severance by Ling Ma for this. It takes place in New York and it depicts New York during a pandemic. So it's very prescient, very eerie and uncanny given what we're going through. The idea of New York City as a ghost town, chilling and creepy, and you definitely get that sense of it in that book. So that's a good story that takes place in a kind of alternate version of New York City. The next one is Bloody Mary, a book that messed me up. Well, right now I'm reading Italo Calvino's If on a Winter's Night a Traveler, and it is fucking weird. So it's not messing me up, but it's a bit of a what the fuck book. A book that messed me up simply from frustration is On the Road by Jack Kerouac. I can't finish that book. Like I've tried it three times and I just get so fed up by the characters. So it just messes me up because I consider myself someone who can finish books. That might not re be the right answer for the prompt, but that book haunts me. Espresso Martini. This is an easy one. This is a book that's kept you up all night. White Ivy by Susie Yang. Couldn't put that book down for the life of me. I was glued to the pages. I was up reading that all hours of the night. Uh, Luster by Raven Leilani, couldn't put that book down for the life of me. The Neapolitan novels, I was like glued to those for all four of them. Like if you have anything to do in your life right now, don't start the Neapolitan novels. Don't start any of these books if you have something really important, like a deadline to meet. The next one is A Long Island Iced Tea, which is a book that is doing too much. It's Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo. I absolutely love this book, so by no means is it like doing too much in the wrong way. I just think that given the amount of characters and amount of chapters, it's like hard to remember the specific stories and the specific characters very well, simply because there are so many and it ends up getting jumbled in your head. And so I think it does a little bit of a disservice to the novel as a whole, just because the reader is going to have some difficulty remembering um, the specificities of the, the stories. And I think personally, it probably could have been cut down a little bit just to make that impact a little sharper. The next one is a Negroni, and that is a book with a love triangle, Luster by Raven Leilani. The girl, Edie, I think is her name, she goes and lives with the family, right, um, and the wife of the man that she's sleeping with and that I have not heard of and it's very strange and I love that take and that's why it's one of my favorite books because who does that? It's amazing. So the next one is A Bay Breeze which is like a light heartwarming book and I don't read those kinds of books so I don't, I looked in my bookshelf, couldn't think of one so I'm 
apologies for that. This one is a dark and stormy, so a menacing, thrilling novel. I don't read a lot of genre fiction, but for this I'm going to choose Lying in Wait by Liz Nugent. Twists and turns that I didn't foresee, so I really like that. There is a tension and a vibe throughout the book and so I think it's a good fit for this answer. And lastly is a martini, so a classic recommendation. I'm going to recommend The Day of the Locust by Nathaniel West. This is one of my favorite books. It's following Todd Hacker, who is the protagonist, and it really looks at the gritty underside of Hollywood and how depraved some of these characters are. It's a supreme novel. It's such a good book. It's so underrated. I don't hear anyone talking about it ever, and it's such a good book. The characters are unforgettable. Thanks so much for watching this quick little tag video. Uh, I just wanted to throw something up that was pretty easy. Uh, thanks the bar in the bookcase for creating the tag. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.